I'm sure it wasn't the first time, and I highly doubt it will be the last. But old mate Todd has committed the ultimate CPAP sin. Thou shall not fall asleep in thy lazy boy recliner without your mask on, Todd. Now, luckily for us, old mate was wearing his Sleep HQ02 ring in his recliner. So we have the dart up before, when he's kicking back in the recliner, no CPAP to after when he puts his mask on. And it's pretty funny. Let's check it out. So we're on Sleep HQ here, looking at the O2 ring dashboard. And we'll scroll down here. We've got some Apple Health data coming through, O2 ring statistics. But we'll come down here <laughs> to the SpO2. This is the blood oxygen levels down here. And you can see this section here. Have a look at it. Right? Versus this section here when he goes to bed and puts his mask on. All right, we'll just zoom in a little bit and have a look. Oh, dear. Poor old Todd. He's got a pacemaker as well. And I imagine it was working overtime at this point. So blood oxygen levels up here at 94, stops breathing, down they crash, down here to 75. That's not good. That's heart attack material right there, Todd. I mean that. And then he takes a big breath. Right, you got all this movement here because he's jerking around in his lazy boy. And uh, <laughs> not jerking off in the lazy boy. <laughs> uh, luckily, Todd's got a good sense of humor. Well, he wouldn't be the first, won't be the last either. Um, and then up comes the O2 levels, back up to 96, and then the process repeats itself again. And you can see his heart here, jumping all over the place. All right, we'll just zoom out here. And look at this. So he's in the lazy boy chair. Have a look at all the movement data, all these yellow spikes here. Looks like he's going for a run. And then um, puts the mask on and look what happens. No movement data. Now we're gonna talk about this bit of movement over here and this desaturation up here shortly because that's pretty funny also. Check out his heart rate. So you can see here, the heart is actually increasing when he's in the lazy boy, all right? Up here at 88, 90. And then he puts his mask on and look what you can see straight away. Ooh, down it comes, down, 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 down down here to 64. Very, very cool. And one more thing. So he's getting his sleep stage data here from Apple Health, and I believe he's got a Withings sleep mat. And he jumps into bed, puts his mask on, and he literally goes straight to deep sleep. Normally you go sort of core sleep for a bit, and then you go to deep sleep where his brain's just gone, stuff this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm skipping straight to go, collecting 200 bucks and hitting deep sleep straight away. There's your deep sleep there. Now, what Todd could have done if he didn't want to fall asleep in that lazy boy, he could have configured an O2 vibrate for his ring so that if his blood oxygen levels drop below 90 or whatever he wants to set, the ring will vibrate to say, hey, mate, you're falling asleep, go and put your mask on. Um, hey, not the end of the world falling asleep, but at the same time, that's not good for your heart. All right, let's um, jump across to his CPAP here. The BiPAP, sorry. ResMed Air Curve 10 V Auto. All right, so that's the cool thing about Sleep HQ, yeah? You can connect up O2 rings, you can get Apple Health, and you also got your CPAP data, so you can see exactly what's going on with your therapy and your sleep. All right, so we'll scroll down here. I wanna show you something here. All right, so we'll zoom in here on his breathing. We can see every breath he takes. All right, so he's breathing in, breathing out, and then all of a sudden we get this drop in signal. What happened there was his mask disconnected from his CPAP tube. Um, and when that happened, look at his blood oxygen levels. So blood oxygen is pretty stable up here, 95. And then all of a sudden, hey, look, here it goes, Woo, down to 87. And then he's woken up out of sleep. Uh-oh, what's going on? Put his mask back on. Sometimes people take their mask off in their sleep. Sometimes things get disconnected and people just continue sleeping, especially if they take their mask off. That happens all the time. So once again, what you can do with the O2 ring, you just set an alarm, a vibrate alarm, so that when that happens and your oxygen levels drop down here, it goes just a gentle vibrate on your thumb, do, 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 wakes you up how you've taken your mask off. You can put it back on. That's really cool. Now. Let's reset the charts here. 
I want to come down here um, and show you something else. So Todd's using a nasal pillow mask. He's got a few issues with mouth leak, all right? We can see all the leak from his mask here. Because it's a pillow mask and it's sealing at the nostrils, normally you get exceptional leak rates with pillow masks because unless they shift out of your nostril, they wedge right in there, so you get a good seal. However, you can see here with Todd, his leak rates are really high. Anything over 24 liters per minute is considered high leak. However, that's just a guide. Um, but what you can see here is all of a sudden, the leak rates go from really high, 40 liters per minute, out his mouth, and then he closes his mouth, boom, they drop right down. Now have a look here. I'm gonna show you this. Check out this beautiful correlation between the leak rates and the airflow limitation chart, the one below here. This is the upper airway resistance. And have a look here. So the leak starts going up, shooting out his mouth, and look what happens to the airflow resistance. You can see that moving up as well, huh? Now the closer that gets to one, the more resistance there is on the inhalation. And the reason there's more resistance is because the air is coming out his mouth. It's not shooting down into his lungs. And we'll go down here a bit further down and we'll check something else out. Check this out. So these are the advanced charts. And what we can see here is this, all right? So here's that airflow limitation up here. There's the big jump in the mouth leak here. And what we can see is when this happens, the tidal volume also drops down here, okay? Now, it's dropping because tidal volume is a measurement of the air flowing into your lungs. And if that air is coming out of his mouth, then you're gonna get a drop, aren't you? And look what also happens. We get a jump in the respiratory rate there, breaths per minute, okay? He's breathing more, faster, because there's less air getting into his lungs. So he's got to compensate, yeah, does that make sense? Back up here, like here, look here, so when the leak rates drop, even down here to sort of 9.6, so they've dropped a long way, and the airflow limitation, that upper airway resistance, disappears, it's gone. And that's because there's more pressure in the circuit. No more air shooting out his mouth, more pressure in the circuit, forcing air past that restriction down into his lungs. And I bet, I know what we're gonna see, we're gonna see that tidal volume move up, which we do. <laughs> here it is here, okay? So there's the tidal volume. Look at it go. Boom, 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 boom. Up here to 600, 580. So that's much more air flowing into his lungs, yeah? How cool is that? I love Sleep HQ. Go and sign up for a free account. It's bloody unreal. Which one is mine? Whichever one you want, man. Whichever one you want. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> Do we dare? We dare. Oh. <laughs>